Hi there, this is David, and welcome to New RPG News. We have a bunch of stuff to discuss today. We have a new Voice of the Cards game, some Pokemon news, some Ayudin Chronicle, Disgaea 7, Valkyrie Elysium, but we're going to be starting with Avatar The Last Airbender. I personally didn't watch the show in its heyday. Um, it came out after I had already graduated college, for God's sakes, but during the shutdown, everybody was going on and on and on about it, so I was like, Psh, I got nothing else to do during the shutdown, might as well watch it, and I did, and I actually really enjoyed Avatar The Last Airbender for, you know, seven-year-olds whenever I was, you know, 39, but anyway, <laughs> there is a new Avatar game called Avatar Quest for Balance. It's an RPG with a Breath of the Wild style, like an art style thing, and it's going to be coming to the PS4, PS5, Xbox, Switch, and PC November 8th. I know, that's like really soon, we really haven't seen anything much of it at all. But this was leaked. Um, there were some listings on Amazon for this game, and then there were some stills shown and some footage shown as well. So this is the real deal. This isn't just some rumor. This is actually happening. This is coming out. Um, even though Breath of the Wild was open world, this is not going to be. This is going to be more regional, I guess. A little bit more smaller. It's just kind of using that art style, that Breath of the Wild art style that seems to be um, kind of in vogue right now. And it says that the framing of the story is actually going to be based upon the television show, which to me is a really good thing. And essentially, each of the characters are getting together and they're talking about, you know, the different war stories. And it says that Paku is covering book one, Water, Boomy covering book two, Earth, and Eo covering book three, Fire. And then you as the player play through these stories from the start to the end of Avatar The Last Airbender. However, their memories aren't foolproof, so you end up playing through alternate histories different from what happened in the show, so it's kind of like Avatar, but what if? What if something else happened? What if it didn't turn out the way that it happened in the show? I liked the show, and I really like the world, and hey, if we get kind of um, an, an, an open region RPG based off of Avatar, I am all about this. I am looking forward to more footage, more information about this, because right now there really isn't much out there, especially since it's coming out so soon, November 8th. And now we have a Twitter leak. Voice of Cards, The Beast of Burden has been leaked on Twitter. This is going to be the third game in this series in under a year. They're really spitting these games out. And I've got to say, I didn't really enjoy the first one all that much. But if they've gotten any better, I mean, I'm down to try out the new ones, especially since they do seem to be rather popular. These are coming out, like, you know, just continuously. Uh, Dragon Roars came out October 21st, and then The Forsaken Maiden came out February 17th, and now this one's coming out too, Beasts of Burden, so yeah. These, uh, these card games seem to be profitable for Square Enix. People seem to like them. They're putting them out. Yoko Taro is behind it. So, I mean, if, if they're getting any better, I'm all about it. The first one did have that fisherman, and I was... I, I liked the fisherman. But other than that, I really can't say many positive things about the game. But hey, you know what? It's another Square Enix game. I like Square Enix, and I will try it. Okay. Pokemon. We heard that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are going to be pretty much open world. And that you can tackle the towns, the dungeons, and the gym leaders in any order that you want to. And gamers collectively said, hey, that's pretty freaking cool. I thought so too. But you know what's not cool? It's not going to include level scaling, so you might as well tackle the gems in, in the order that you're intended to anyway. So what's the point of having an open world? What's the point of saying, you can go anywhere you want to, but if you go to this gym at level 10 when you're supposed to be there at level 60, you're going to get your ass handed to you. So you better go down to that level 10 gym that you're supposed to go to. What's the point? This doesn't make sense to me. Why don't you have level scaling? If you have an open world game, you 
probably should have the gym leaders scale to your level, it just makes sense to me, but whatever. We know that because, right down here, the game's official website says, There is no set path to the gyms. You can purposely seek out a stronger gym leader, or you can simply stop by a gym that happens to be located in a town that you come across on your journey. So, yeah, they have specifically stronger gym leaders and specifically weaker gym leaders. So even though it's open world and you can go wherever you want to, you still better do those gym leaders in this particular order, the order that Nintendo says to. Yeah, kind of, um backwards decision if you ask me, but hey, I figured it's newsworthy and I will let y'all know. I'm still gonna get Scarlet and or Violet, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I liked Arcus, so hey, sue me. Valkyrie Elysium, the fourth game in the long-running Valkyrie Profile series, is going to have a demo. Hell yeah! I love it whenever a game has a demo, because then I can make my decision, and I can figure out, hey, is this really gonna, you know, am I, am I going to like it? Or is this gonna be a Dark Souls clone, and I'm going to hate it? I can find out with a demo. So the last demo that I played was the Diofield Chronicle demo, which I was pleasantly surprised by. So, we have a demo listed for the PS4 and PS5 here. The demo is not out yet. This is kind of a leak that there will be a demo to be released. The game's coming out on the 30th of September, so this demo should be coming out any day now, I've got to say. All we know is that it's listed on the um, the PS Store backend, and they kind of leaked that out there, but we don't actually have the demo available for us to play. This is just news that there will be a demo for this game, which I really want a demo because I still can't really wrap my head around is this going to be side-scrolling? Is it going to be puzzle-solving and Metroidvania? Is it going to be turn-based combat? Or, like, you know, like, like the other ones? Or is this going to be Dark Souls? Let's find out. In all the excitement of these upcoming games that are being released this fall, in the excitement of the spiritual successors of Wild Arms and Shadow Hearts coming out, Arn Fantasia and Penny Blood, let us not forget that there is also a spiritual successor to Suikoden, Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes, and there is a new trailer out for that. So that looks really nice. It says, latest look at the upcoming strategy RPG. I was thinking it was a turn-based RPG, but okay, it's strategy, but whatever. So this is coming out um, next year. We don't know when, but it's coming out next year for the PS5, Xbox, PS4, the Switch, and the PC. And we have a little bit of an overview of the game here too that I'll read while you look at the trailer above me. It says, Our story begins in one quarter of Alran, a tapestry of nations with diverse cultures and values. By dint of sword and by way of magical objects known as rune lenses, the land's history has been shaped by alliances and aggressions of the humans Beastmen, elves, and desert people who live there. The Galdian Empire has edged out other nations and discovered a technology that amplifies the Rune Lynch's magic. Now, the Empire is scouring the continent for an artifact that will expand their power even farther. It is on one such expedition that Sine Kiesling, a young and gifted Imperial officer, and Noah, a boy from a remote village, meet each other and become friends. However, a twist of fate will soon drag them into the fires of war and force them both to re-examine everything that they believe to be right and true. I am so looking forward to this. That Mobley game was not exactly the best thing ever, but this should be. And we have a new game announcement. Disguise 7 has been announced for the PS5, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. It's coming out right now January 26th in Japan only. We don't have an announcement for anything Western quite yet. I know that a lot of people weren't exactly pleased with the direction that the series went with Disgaea 6, kind of mobily, a lot of the classes weren't there, auto battle features, that sort of stuff. Hopefully this is a return to form. Uh, we do have the trailer going on right above me, and something that I think is kind of neat is that the whole thing is Japanese inspired. 
It's set in the world called the Hinamoto Netherworld Cluster, which is inspired by Japanese culture. Our heroes will fight through the world in order to regain their lost Bushido. So, that's pretty neat. And it says that it will have its signature replayability features, as well as over-the-top battle systems, which have been further enhanced. So you're going to be going through the netherworld and fighting through corrupt shogunate to enhance your Bushido. There's a huge pretty right there. It's super cute. I'm not really a fan of this main character's hair design. I don't know what's happening right there with that. It's just kind of odd, but whatever. It just seems kind of neat. I don't know. So it says right here that the Onsen Netherworld, where the hot springs spit out evil spirits instead of water, there's a sardine netherworld, which, which exists in a supersized space sardine, and Shikoku netherworld, which has a gigantic whirlpool that destroyed countless demonic ships. So there's multiple different netherworlds right here that you're going to be exploring, but each of the inhabitants do follow the Bushido code right there. You can see the kind of Japanese-inspired buildings right there, some of this artwork. It looks absolutely beautiful. Some of the characters here as well. Very, very, very exciting right there. And now, for my last bit of news, I just wanted to talk again about the Arm Fantasia and Penny Blood Kickstarter. I know I just talked about this, but hey, it's news! And it's live today! It's actually been live for less than 12 hours, and out of its goal of $721,000, it's, it's getting there! $467,000 and counting! This is really going up. A lot of people do seem to be very excited about this, I must say. So, because it's live today, I just thought, hey, you know, I'll mention it one more time. We have new gameplay footage, new trailers of these games. There's different support tiers that you can do. Um, the tier that I think that I'm personally going to support at, I want to say it's like $110, and you get a physical version of Arm Fantasia and Penny Blood, and if you consider that a new game is normally $60 each, or you're at least saving yourself $10 by picking those up. And yeah, I know it's untested, I know it's a Kickstarter, and all that, I get it, I'm completely aware. But, I'm also aware of you need to support these people who are trying to do something that you love, something that that you're passionate about, and I'm passionate about these JRPGs, and this isn't just some fans getting together. This is the real deal. This is the development team of these original games getting together and doing this. This isn't just some Joe Blow in his basement somewhere, you know? So I really have high hopes and I think that this is really going to be very good. I know that there's other tiers that you can support at as well. Um, a lot of people on my Discord server were saying that they're going to support at, I want to say it's an $80 tier, and that gives you a digital copy of Arm Fantasia and a digital copy of Penny Blood. So there's different tiers, again, that you can support at, different ways that you can support this, and I just thought that I'd bring it up one more time uh, since it is live and since they do have a limited amount of time in order to reach their goals and reach all of these stretch goals that they have um, listed for the games as well. So, let me know in the comments what you are most excited about, what leak, what new release you're most excited about. Let me know in the comments, and as always, have a good day.